Welcome back, everyone. Continuing to talk possible solutions in uh, preventing another Toledo water crisis uh, like happened this past weekend or uh, coming up on uh, seven, eight days ago now with Mike Libin from uh, Ottawa County, Dr. Isabel Escobar and Tom Henry from the Toledo Blade. Dr. Escobar, I asked you, what was the big takeaway from that forum this past week? Uh, I think lay it the on us. big takeaway is that uh, it is the cause of this is man-made. We're always going to have algae blooms. We had algae blooms before. It's, uh, it's natural, they're natural. They're, they peak usually late August, early September from natural causes of warm weather, lots of sunlight, warm waters, winds. So we're prone to that. But the very large algae bloom that we had that would go straight through the glasses of water that everybody kept taking yeah. and showing, it is due to the addition of a man-made extra nitrogen and phosphorus, especially phosphorus, in the fertilizers. So as I, as I said before, and I keep saying, it's like we're giving algae candy to grow more and more and faster. And we have to take care of that. And we also have to take care of the water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. We have an aging infrastructure for our water treatment plant. Uh, Toledo first started providing drinking water in the late 1800s. Uh, the water treatment plant has received several upgrades, but it needs a large upgrade. Mm -hmm. I once uh, had a scientist tell me that the, the algae that we're seeing has been around almost as long as the earth itself. It's been, mm -hmm. you know, thousands and thousands of years yeah. old. They're the biggest source of oxygen yeah, really but, but in Yeah, but like the you oceans. said, playing off your, 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 your comment about the candy, he said, in nature, the, this particular algae gives off a toxin as a kind of a defense mechanism. It's a living thing. It gives off a toxin, a de defense mechanism, but it just was never meant to grow, and we keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. So I said, okay, so essentially we got the blob here in Lake Erie and uh, this, the old grade B movie, Steve McQueen mm -hmm. movie. And, yeah. And he said, exactly. exactly. He goes, you're, you're just, you're giving it way too much food. Anything in nature, the more food you give it, the more it's going to grow as a species. Mm -hmm. So... I want to go back to 2010. I was in Sol Salina, Ohio. I think it was 2010 now, and when, at the height of their algae bloom, uh, and, and I saw what happened to that lake, Grand Lake St. Mary's, and the surrounding town because it, they depended on uh, on tourism uh, in the, in the mm -hmm. heart, heart of summertime. And this mm -hmm. past week, there's something called the NABF Baseball World Series, and teams come from here from New York and, and Pennsylvania and and Missouri and Texas. And Saturday morning, they left. They just picked up and left. And that because the restaurants were closed, uh, there was, you know, we kind of shut things down. Um, so the long range impact is tremendous. We saw mm -hmm. that in, in, mm -hmm. just, in just two days. We saw it coming though. We talked about Grand Lake yeah. St. Mary's and Carroll Township not that long ago, Mike Libin. Uh, what, what was the, uh, I guess the lesson learned there, uh, right. if, if we're, now we're raising, raising our hands. Yeah, last September is when the Carroll mm -hmm. Township plant, that's where I, I live in Carroll mm -hmm. Township in Ottawa County, it shut down for about two days because of the same situation. Of course, they had opportunity to hook up to Ottawa County's water system, so they had a backup plan and was able to get back up and running mm -hmm. fairly quickly. But I guess it's not a surprise from the agricultural end that we have these issues because, you know, the 2011 was a real bad algae bloom on the lake. I think that was right. a little bit of a wake up, a little bit of a wake up call that yeah, there, something needs to be done here, and agriculture has been very active. Do you feel like you're between a rock and a hard place as, a, as an American farmer, Mike? It is somewhat because yeah. we're, we're tasked with growing a, a, Food on a our large table, crop. Your yeah, table. We're trying to feed the world. Yes. We're, we're feeding the world. So, but we need to do it in a responsible, responsible way. And you know, if there's some practices we can do to make things better, cover crops, water control structures, uh, conservation tillage, putting all those things together, we can help reduce the phosphorus flow off the fields for sure. Senator Ron Portman sat in uh, one of these chairs here about a month ago and said, hey, we were signed this bill, uh, co-sponsored by a gentleman from Florida, to put more federal money into research of, of algal blooms, mm -hmm. uh, not only in uh, salt water, but in fresh water. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not as if uh, politicians didn't see this coming either, uh, Tom. So is federal money on the way? Well, and I don't know. I don't is this know. the wake-up call we need? It's, a, it's the wake-up. Washington wake up, needs. It's the wake-up call, and it's what uh, it's what this region needs. But uh, and it's been going on forever. I mean, just you were talking about the tourism. There was a lot of anxiety last year that people didn't know about leading up to. You remember the bison, the bicentennial of the uh, the War of 1812 mm -hmm. and all the ships that mm -hmm. came in. Yes. Think yeah. about if the winds had been different, and and that was a pretty heavy year for algae. We were lucky because we had national attention from that, and it would have been if we had a, a totally green lake at the time. But this has been going 
going on since 1995. I mean, I I get frustrated when people just say that it it, it just started uh, a couple of years ago. No, it. I remember getting on a boat with Dr. David Culver from Ohio State University. The first year this was found uh, in 1995 after a 20, 25 year absence from the 70s. And immediately it created, uh, they mobilized a, a large U.S. Um, Canadian research. It became the hottest research topic among scientists That's back in 1990. Yeah. Back uh, in 1990. Go ahead. I, I yeah. read some that I read some old reports of the 1920s and 30s, mm. okay. complaining about similar issues with algae blooms and farming. Yeah. Yeah. And so. just to add, also, you know, on the federal funding that uh, you were just talking about, as a researcher whose research from the entire world revolves depend around. Depend on that funding, Yeah, right? it depends yeah. on but, but federal there, funding. But there's, there's there no has been an incredible decrease hmm. from all sources of federal funding coming towards universities for research. They focused a lot on energy research and everything else hmm. has kind of taken a secondary life wa light. Water research for a long period now has been considered a non-hot hmm. topic. But there's hmm. been almost like a sense of denial, almost like, and I've drawn parallels, like in a blog post this week to to 9/11, uh, you know, it was just like there was there was a sense that you know we're too, we're too big, the technology's too good here in Toledo, and it won't happen for to us, us to fail. For us to fail, too mm -hmm. big to fail, and we're and we're finding out now that that's that's not the mm -hmm. case. Even it wasn't until 2010 that the Ohio Department of Health even started putting out uh, uh, warning signs on beaches for for uh, this microsystem. Right. And and all too often we see it at Maumee Bay. The, yeah. the warnings on the beach and along yeah. Lake Erie quickly, very quickly. Uh, Mike Libin, look at looking, put a crystal ball, we're gonna give that to you. What happens a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now for the American farmer? Well, I, I hope that they are paying attention to what's going on and thinking about their own land. What are they doing on their, with their own farming operation? How can I do things better? Uh, talk to your local soil and water conservation district. You know, we, the watershed goes from here to Fort Wayne. Yeah. There's a lot of counties covered. Um, we're all here for helping the farmer out. Thank you for being here today. Yep. Mike Libin, and Dr. Isabel Escobar, and Tom Henry. Great conversation. Thank you so much. We hope a lot of folks are listening. And we do believe a lot of people are. When we come back on Conklin & Company, the county's role in moving forward from this water crisis. Pete Gherkin joins us right after this.